once again, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Defeating Isolation and Social Exclusion Through Peer Empowerment, Part 3. History of Mental Health America, um, the It's My Life program, which we'll be discussing today, is a program of Mental Health America, which is the nation's oldest advocacy organization or addressing the full spectrum of mental health and substance use conditions and the profound impact they have on the public health. Uh, Mental Health America was founded by Clifford Beers, who was himself a consumer, a mental health peer. And we at Mental Health America focus on prevention for all, early identification and intervention for those at risk. And we have recovery as our goal. Mental Health America, the national headquarters, successfully launched the It's My Life Social Explorations Program in the Northern Virginia area. And so today we will be discussing additional details about our program and you will learn how you can implement the successful It's My Life program in your area with your organization. I am your presenter today. My name is Siobhan Carpenter. I am a certified peer recovery specialist in the state of Virginia. I have a background with counseling, peer support, individual and group settings, um, as well as co-occurring disorder. I am one of the original life coaches for the pilot program of the It's My Life, and am now working as the head life coach trainer, conducting trainings that Mental Health America now offers. The purpose of the It's My Life program is to advance recovery and improve the lives of individuals with severe psychiatric conditions. And we focus on some of the most isolated and misunderstood members of our communities. We assist peers in finding their power to reclaim their place in the community, we provide a safe place for individuals to learn and practice skills to prepare themselves as they move forward on their chosen recovery path. Participants in the It's My Life program are accompanied on their recovery journey by trained peer life coaches who help them bridge the gap into a larger social world. The importance of social connection in the overall goal and journey of recovery is that the It's My Life program is designed to help build networks of friends and intimate relationships. We help create a strong social support system and increase self-esteem and self-worth. Ultimately, our program uses a self-directed care model and other techniques to help participants set and reach social and personal goals so that they can go back to school or find volunteer positions or employment if that is what they desire. The piloting of our program focused on individuals with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. This was because they are often among the community's most isolated and marginalized. Schizophrenia affects how a person thinks, feels, and acts. Someone with schizophrenia may experience difficulty distinguishing what is real from what is imaginary. They may be unresponsive or withdrawn and may have a hard time expressing what's known as normal emotions in social situations. Individuals with schizoaffective disorder often encounter similar troubles, uh, which may be accompanied by a mood disorder such as depression or bipolar. Given the complexity of the conditions of schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder and that social impairments uh, occur at all stages of these illnesses, the need for an innovative approach and in helping to develop social skills, friends, and intimate relationships is particularly acute for this population. Although the piloting of this program focused on individuals with schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder, the principles and practices of social self-directed care and the It's My Life program can be applied with any mental health diagnosis. We have a variety of evaluation techniques in our program to help us measure how things were going and the differences that we were making in the lives of our participants. One of our first evaluation techniques was the Personal Outcome Measures Survey Tool. 
PLM stands for Personal Outcome Measures, and it starts with a person's own view of their life. And the outcome defines what is important to the person, and the measure offers objective determination of whether people are getting what is personally important to them. So instead of looking at the quality of how the services are being delivered, the POM looks at whether services and supports are having the desired results or outcomes that matter to the person. Our results for the POM uh, was an overall increase in quality of life as it was described by our participants. You will see here a chart um, indicating the POM statements that we focused on. We focused on 13 of the 21 quality of life indicators in the POM tool. And you will see a great increase from the initial score until the final score once we calculated everything, uh, once the POM interviews were conducted with all of our participants. We did a POM survey at the beginning of our program prior to enrolling our participants. We completed a second one in the middle of their enrollment, and then once again at the conclusion of the program. You will notice that all of the scores increased except for one, and that would be number 17, people choose personal goals. So we wondered why that happened. Why would that particular quality go down uh, when our program was all about choosing goals? Everything in our program was self-directed, especially choosing those social goals for our participants. So we asked them, and when we inquired, they said that setting their own goals in the It's My Life program helped them to realize how many of their other goals were being set for them. Here's a graph where you can see more clearly um, the changes, more quantitatively and visually. Another evaluation technique that we used was satisfaction surveys. We participate, we mailed out satisfaction surveys to all of our participants and included a business reply envelope with postage included. We, can, we sent them out um, in the middle of the program and then again at the end. It provided participants an avenue to anonymously provide feedback about their coaches and about the program. It also allowed our coaches to get significant feedback um, on where we needed to grow and how we could improve our services. Of the 17 participants who completed our survey, 95% rated their satisfaction with the program with the highest possible rating. Our next evaluation technique was the guided journal. We used guided journaling as a measure of increased quality of life where participants maintain a weekly journal talking about their activities and their reactions to them. The journal includes a number of set questions that helps the individual to look at their activities and their relationships to their goals. From the journal, it could be determined if the program was having an effect on someone's overall well-being. From our journals, we could see that as people progress toward achievement of their goals, they often see that the goals they identified are a stepping stone to a higher goal with the potential for an increased impact on their day-to-day -day life, their feelings of pride for what they have achieved, and optimism about the future. Here's a quote from one of our participants' journals. She says, I think the combination of going to drawing class, seeing my coach, and journaling is like practicing, and I have been seeing improvements. I feel more confident, clear-minded, and outgoing. Also from our journal entries, it was observed that when participants realize that they are more than capable of learning new skills and responding appropriately to social stimuli, that they had a boost in self-confidence. Another one of our participants journaled. She said, at my DBSA group, I had a conversation with a co-attendee. She asked me if I would like to go get coffee or dinner. 
I tried to be more positive by responding yes, and we exchanged phone numbers. NILS evaluation technique with hospitalization rates. Past hospitalizations from the two years prior to enrollment in the program were documented with informed consent provided by the participants. Any rehospitalizations that occurred during their enrollment was also documented, and we took note of any changes that the participant received in services. Our results were phenomenal. In the two years prior to entering the social self-directed care program, participants had experienced a total of 15 hospitalizations. In the 19 months of activities, only one member had experienced a single hospitalization. Aside from, aside from joining the It's My Life program, our participants had no other changes in the services they were receiving. Amongst the tools and innovation in the It's My Life program were peer support, self-directed care, psychiatric rehabilitation, and life coaching. These are all of the tools that we incorporated and taught to our life coaches and utilize these skills and tools to help our participants on their recovery journey. An overview of the It's My Life program process. We start with the life coach training. You will learn more about that today and how you can develop a team of life coaches in your organization and have them trained by our staff here at Mental Health America. Next is recruitment, and that's just the process of getting people enrolled in the program. Forming of the partnership, we will explore a bit more of that today, as well as skill building and outings. We talked a little bit about the evaluation techniques. Um, these things are also covered in parts one and two of our webinar, which are available on our website. And lastly, the results, which we also talked about just moments ago. Um, and you will see how you can implement this program to maintain these same kinds of results for your community. A look at the participant peer coach relationship in the It's My Life program. For starters, participants were given the opportunity to select their own life coach, given that they were of the same gender. So we, we only had female participants in our program because we only had female coaches on our team um, during the interview process and hiring for the life coach position. It was determined that the most qualified individuals just so happened to be the all females at that time, um, and there was not a male coach who had applied and was selected for the position. But certainly this program would be suitable for anyone um, of any gender or any mental health diagnosis. So our participants were introduced to all of the available coaches to determine their level of peerness and compatibility, who they could relate to the most. Uh, this also included sharing the coaches' biographies with them, which we did in advance whenever possible. And here, as you can see, the male-female dynamic was taken into consideration, and that was in order to avoid transference and countertransference. Details of transference and countertransference is something also that will be taught to the team of life coaches for organizations that implement our program. The strength of the peer relationship was enhanced in our program through regular meetings and strategic self-disclosure. Solidarity and credibility are built through empathy, honesty, and authenticity. Throughout the program, the coach serves as a mentor and a friend. We understand that when people are excluded from the day-to-day -day activities of their community, whether it's from the effects of illness or by societal discrimination, people either lose or never learn the skills necessary to navigate socially or to seek out, initiate, and form new bonds and friendships. Our coaches assist individuals in identifying inter interesting activities in the community, learning where they are available, and then participating in those activities, which give them opportunities to meet other people who have interests similar to them. And that helps to 
address the exclusion um, from those day-to-day -day activities in their community. A major part of the relationship with It's My Life was the goal setting. The peer life coaches um, assist participants with setting social goals. So there were three set each month. Together, the life coach and the participant evaluate the participant's feelings about their current social standing. They assess hobbies, interests, and community involvement and the accessibility of them. And then they explore creative solutions to the barriers to accessing those activities and interests. Meetings were conducted weekly or bi-weekly. And during this time, the peer life coach and the participant engage in friendly conversation, effective listening, and shared experiences. They determine and discuss the three social goals of the participant. All social activities um, that we will talk about as far as the outings go back to these social goals that were set at these meetings. The social goals can change over time and even on a monthly basis. And that happens more and more often as the goals are met. Once the participant has established their social goals and come up with their plan to accomplish them, the coach assists them with carrying out that plan. The coach provides encouragement, support, and feedback to the participant as they work together in the partnership. Our participants received a monthly allowance of $60, which was spent on advancing towards three social goals. And that amount was pending the completion of the guided journal, as we discussed, and consistently providing proof of purchase. And this was done through receipts to document how the money was spent and make sure that everything correlated to the social goals, the action plan, and the spending plan. The activities were pre-approved by the life coach and the program director. Examples in the It's My Life program that are of goals that our participants had set for themselves included learning socially acceptable talk in public places, enjoying self in social situations like Thanksgiving dinner, get out of the house more often. And these are literally in the words of our participants as we went through some worksheets that we have developed um, during the training process of the It's My Life program for our coaches and walk them through this goal setting and discovering what goals were important to them. So what you're seeing here are actual quotes from them of what they determined through the guidance of their coach that were goals that they wanted to accomplish. Additional examples were making and meeting new friends, work on a new hobby, which is baking, join and complete a drawing class, be more talkative and social, and give back to the community. During the sessions with the coach, the individuals begin to identify their social goals and the activities that interest them using various worksheets that are provided in their participant handbook. Our training includes those, those forms that you will be able to utilize. Um, the coach frequently accompanies them into the community for the various outings. They may meet regularly for a cup of coffee and conversation, or they might attend a community event. When they're not out on outings, the visits are spent reviewing the journaling, goals, skill sets, and handouts and worksheets that assist the participant in progressing toward their identified social goals. The life coaches provide a safe sounding board for the participants to express themselves and work through their challenges. Sessions with a life coach also uh, included skill building. Our coaches provide guidance and education on new social life skills in several different areas, which included identifying areas of interest, 
collaborating in decision making, um, budgeting the spending account, and attending the social activities, assisting in building community inclusion, helping to form and enhance healthy relationships and intimate relationships and friendships, um, coaching and feedback regarding progress, building connections to employment or volunteerism, communication, emotion regulation, effective listening, and self-care. These are just a few of the skills uh, that our life coaches would help our participants with. Uh, there were also lessons on personal boundaries and understanding social norms. We taught things like how to properly set a table in a, in a formal restaurant, specifics about manners and um, appropriate conversation in social settings. Other skills as they were discovered um, and the participants felt they were necessary for positive social interaction were also taught. So as the relationship develops and the participant discovers the skills that they want to develop, the coach then tailors their meetings and their lessons to those particular skills. Especially during the outings, the coaches model how friends interact through conversation and activities. When coaches model the qualities that form friendships, the participants learn not only how to be a friend, but also recognize when someone is a true friend. They learn that friends are honest, understanding, supportive, and loyal. They also learn that having a friend is both a gift and an obligation that there are responsibilities to the friendship, that it is mutual, um, and, and begin to learn their part of the relationship as well as what to expect from their friends. When many people talk about their recovery, they often say that the most important single thing is to have at least one person who believes in them, just one friend. And so helping our participants identify what they considered a friend one of the things that I, I was happy to observe being a life coach was that one of the comments from people was that they actually had more friends than they realized. Once they assessed the relationships that they had, they were able to say, oh, this person actually is my friend. I hadn't really put those pieces together and made that particular identification. Um, so they were able to see that they had a higher social standing than they had originally evaluated themselves to have. By continuing to participate in activities shared with people uh, who have similar interests, people are able to build familiarity with one another and the seemingly insurmountable social barriers gradually are overcome. Repeated exposure to these experiences and to other people lessens the feelings of social anxiety and the shyness so often felt by those of us who have experienced isolation and social exclusion. For some of us, myself included, initiating a conversation with a stranger can open doorways to developing connections in the community. So here's an illustration of how the peer, coach, the peer coach and participant relationship works. It starts out with just the basic recruitment and training of the coach. Um, the coach develops the skills that they need to teach to the participant. Once the participant is enrolled and selects their life coach, the forming of the partnership begins. And it starts out with just the participant and the life coach. They meet together at the location chosen by the participant. They share stories, they share experiences, they share ideas, and they also work on building skills. So those initial meetings focus mostly on skill building and goal setting. Then they progress to outings where the peer coach accompanies that participant out to their outings of choice. And from there, the coach is modeling, 
Um, the coach is also able to provide feedback on the application of the skills. The participant is able to also evaluate their experience um, and learn what other skills they would like to be able to implement. Uh, and, and the coach is there for support. The coach is there encouraging them. And one example is there was one participant who wanted to uh, learn to crochet. It was something she kind of already did, but she really wanted to take that uh, coping skill that she had. It was just a, a strategy that she had for passing time and keeping herself engaged and distracting herself. And she wanted to be able to take that talent and that interest of hers and to engage with other people who had an interest in knitting and crocheting. So together we did some research and found a meetup group online. We scheduled accordingly. Uh, I met up with her and then we went to the meetup group together. I sat there with her for a while as she began to conversate with the other members of the meetup group. Um, they crocheted together, they knit together, they talked together, just met at a local coffee shop. So I sat there with her, I'd have coffee with them. Uh, I, even, I even learned to, to do a little uh, crocheting myself, um, which was just amazing. And that's part of the beauty of the relationship is that it is mutual um, and that even the coach gained things from it. So as she continued to attend those outings, the meetup group, um, eventually she would start going on her own to that meetup group. And she continues to this day to go and knit and crochet with her new friends. So gradually, I would pull away, and she would go more and more by herself. I might slip in maybe once a month with her um, as she continued to go to the meetup group. And then eventually, I stopped going all together, and she would continue on her own. So that's the basics for how the process works and how that relationship transitions over time. So I'll give you an update on where some of our participants are today. You'll notice that there is a, a little code there at the top, um, and that was an identification number that we had for our participants. On all of our record keeping, we did not um, identify them by name. We wanted to maintain their confidentiality and privacy. So we came up with an identification system. Um, to be able to, to know uh, which records we were keeping. Um, so here this particular participant, while she was enrolled in the It's My Life program, set the goal to increase what she referred to as her intellectual property. As part of that, she wanted to learn how to use a camera. That was something she was always interested in. So she actually decided to save a part of her $60 stipend for several months, and then she was able to purchase her own digital camera. And now she records the services at her local church in the media ministry. And it's one of the ways that she loves being involved in that community and giving back to that community that she says has really been a staple for her and her recovery and a great support for her. So she's really glad to be able to participate in that. Another one of our participants set a goal to increase her social and support network. She is now a certified peer recovery specialist in the state of Virginia, and she is an advanced RAP facilitator. Using the skills she learned in our program and her own lived experiences, she's also facilitated other mental health recovery groups and is employed part-time. Another woman um, that we worked with set the goal to improve and share her musical talent. I met with her um, and she had a piano and she would practice and I would just sit there and we would conversate and we would laugh and um, share our, our interests in music. Um, and so she used her stipend to purchase sheet music. And now she volunteers at a local senior living facility and plays the piano for the residents. I spoke with her recently, and she's looking forward to going and playing some Christmas carols for the holidays um, at that senior living facility.
So we've concluded um, through all of our evaluation, through all of our tracking of, of the results and our outcome measurements that the It's My Life Social Self-Directed Care Program is highly relevant to any whole health approach to behavioral health. The savings and reduction of emergency services uh, increased overall health and the lowered rehospitalization rates that were accomplished makes this an affordable service for managed care and state-funded programs. The program would also be ideal for operation by a peer-run organization. Having focused on one of the most marginalized populations and receiving the remarkable results that it, we did, it would be a reasonable expectation that even greater outcomes would be achieved for individuals who have less complicated mental health challenges. The It's My Life program is an integrated skill and support strategy that is designed to help individuals who have complicated mental health conditions um, or just severe challenges to build networks of friends and intimate relationships. It creates a strong social support system. This in turn helps the participant to become an active member of their community and feel less isolated, which also helps increase self-esteem and self-worth. The increase in their overall health um, that resulted from this has shown to decrease the need for hospitalizations, as well as avoiding premature death. This My Life is a very unique program, and it's been highly successful in assisting people to end isolation and feelings of social exclusion. Our participants have found new meanings in their lives and have gone on to build lasting relationships and connections in their community. The most important aspects of the It's My Life program have been the nature of the peer relationships, establishing meaningful goals and action steps to achieve them, as well as the breaking down of the barriers that have prevented people from finding friendships and connectivity in the community. Some of those barriers included transportation, it included the skill sets, and it included the support. Um, it also included the, the financial stability. So our program provided all of those things to address those issues, to help people develop those relations and make those connections. Mental Health America's goal for the future of It's My Life is to see it implemented across the country. The program effectively addresses the need that each of us has to build friendships and connections in our communities and self-direction empowers us to take control of our destinies. Social inclusion is about being able to participate and contribute in social life. That includes economic, social, psychological, and political terms. To do this requires having personal capacity as well as access to a range of social roles. And the It's My Life program addresses each one of those aspects. Our program is suitable, suitable to be operated by peer-run organizations, state mental health establishments, community service boards, or mental health centers, church organizations, MHA affiliates, NAMI groups, um, and many other similar organizations will be able to implement this program. So in order to get started implementing the It's My Life program, you will need to have fidelity to all of the basic principles of the It's My Life model, especially remaining truly self-directed. Organizations will also need to review the three-part webinar. Today is part three. Parts one and two are available on our website for viewing, um, and part three will be made available soon. And it's also important that you have community resources. It's one of the skills that we'll teach to your life coaches to be able to identify what's available in your community, to be able to build those community connections and partnerships, and help your participants know what's available to them.
Also, to get started, you would need the It's My Life training manual, the participant handbook and handout. Um, those are all available on our website for download. And hard copies will be provided to the, pro the program director for any organization that implements our program and takes our training. Um, you would also need peer support specialists, of course, the program director, and funding. Possible sources for funding include state mental health authorities, PSBs, the Community Services Board, mental health centers, excuse me, and philanthropic organizations. The pilot program of It's My Life was funded by Mental Health America and a grant from Jensen Pharmaceutical Company. Our funds were used to pay the salary for our program staff for the training of our coaches. That included uh, a course through Boston University uh, for psychiatric rehabilitation. Our life coaches studied that intensely. <laughs> um, and we also uh, use the funds for program materials, such as uh, printing for the binders that um, enclose the participant handbook for the social budget for the participants, and for reimbursing our coaches for the cost of travel and outings with the participants. As I said, Mental Health America's experienced peer life coaches are available for individual or group training in person, by phone, or video calls. Our virtual trainings are free, absolutely no cost. Um, we do also offer in-person training. There is uh, an expense for in-person training, and that covers the travel um, and accommodation for our training team. The trainings we offer by, uh, from MHA identifies key parts of peer support, shared decision making. Um, we focus on the, the critical parts from the, the studies that our coaches did for the Center for Psychiatric Rehabilitation from Boston University. So that's actually a pretty expensive course. You can send your coaches through it if you wish. Um, but our training allows your coaches to be able to take out just the key parts and be able to apply those specific parts to the It's My Life program and their peer life coaching process. We also identify the parts of um, specific to life coaching um, and motivational interviewing. Our training includes flexible scheduling to meet the needs of your team. It includes the training kit, um, which also is part of the hard copies of all of our materials, um, individual instruction sessions for the program director, and separate training sessions for the life coaching team, as well as technical assistance after implementation of the program. So once you get started, we stick with you. Our team stays and supports you to ensure successful implementation by your organization. We train your coaches to help them learn the tools of our program that included peer support, psychiatric rehabilitation, motivational interviewing, shared decision making, all of the tools that we incorporated, um, self-directed care, the history of peer support, um, and how that's applied today, and the growth of, of the peer movement. Um, they learn how to work with people who have social challenges. We teach your coaches to understand boundaries, both personal and professional, how boundaries specifically uniquely applies in the peer relationship. And we also uh, encourage your coaches and, and help them to incorporate their own personal self-care into the services that they provide to help them know that um, taking care of themselves is, an, is a critical role in their being a peer life coach. Um, and we also help the program director to provide support for their life coaches. We are also introducing the It's My Life Social Exploration the Support Group format. 
This new format will allow organizations to reduce their expenses in implementing the It's My Life program. Training for this format also includes additional resources relating to support groups. In this particular format, the coaches, uh, in, in our original format, I should say, our coaches worked one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it was just that one-on-one -on -one individual support. In the new support group format, the coach will work with a group of individuals, um, and that will reduce the cost um, and the time required by the live coaches. Mental Health America would like to thank Jensen and Alchemy um, for their sponsorship, sponsorship uh, for the grants that they provided for us to train other organizations and end social exclusion and isolation through our It's My Life social self-directed care. Again, I am Siobhan Carpenter. I am the Head Life Coach Trainer at Mental Health America. This concludes our webinar for today, um, part three of Defeating Isolation and Social Exclusion Through Peer Empowerment. Uh, certificates are available for completion of today's webinar. You will simply need to email me a request. Um, I am aware that not everyone has received their certificates for part two, but they are still on the way. Uh, if you would like a certificate, please do, again, send me that email. It is scarpenter at mentalhealthamerica.net. That's S-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R at mentalhealthamerica.net. All of these slides will be available on our website as well as a recording for your review. If you would like additional information about this training, how you can implement the In My Life program in your organization, please do feel free to contact me. I will be more than happy to set up a, a conference call with you, a session to uh, help you understand even more of our program, answer any questions that you may have. I can be reached by telephone at 703-946-0529. Again, that is 703-946-0529. And so with that, I will take a moment. If you have any questions, um, I did not see any come in uh, that have not been addressed. But if you have any questions that I have not answered, please do uh, uh, type them into the chat box now um, that I may be able to answer any questions that you have. Uh, I see a question here. Um, Justin has asked if we will be sending out slides. Um, Justin, if you will send me a direct email, I will be happy to email these slides to you. Um, however, they will be available on our website. That may be a, a simpler way for you, uh, a simpler and faster way for you to access them. Terry, I see your question. How do you partner? How do you partner members of the LGBTQ community? Um, um, Terry, I'm not quite certain um, what you mean by that, but I, I will address that as best I can. Um, as far as partnering them with a life coach, um, that would basically just be on a peer basis. Uh, part of their meeting with our life coach team would be for them to determine who they are most connected to, who they most relate to. Um, so that would be something that we would allow our participants to be able to facilitate. As far as um, if we partner in the community, um, part, of, part of the skills that we teach to our life coaches is being able to find those various resources in the community. Um, if that means finding things specific to the LGBT community, then our coaches are, are, will be trained um, and able to do that, especially if an organization has a focus with that population.
Rebecca, thank you for joining us. I see that uh, you will be sharing this with your staff. I greatly appreciate that. Um, for anyone who would like to give a presentation to your staff, um, we've had, I've done that before. We are available for that. Um, if you would like specific details for your organization, how this could be tailored, I would be more than happy to work that out with you um, and be able to communicate with your team, uh, your, your staff as, as the decision makers require additional information and details. So it looks like that's all the questions that we have for today. Um, if you think of anything that you would like to ask me later, please do, again, send me that email or give me a call. That number is 703-946-0529. And the email address is scarpenter, S-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R, at mentalhealthamerica.net. Thank you all for joining us. Um, again, certificates will be going out. And I hope you will contact me to see how we can implement this successful program in your community to defeat isolation and social exclusion through peer empowerment. Thank you all. Take care. Have a happy holidays, and we'll see you in the new year.